very welcome back. Now our next guest is one of the world's most popular authors and has topped bestseller lists around the world with sales of over 275 million copies in 97 countries in more than 37 languages. Yes, here to tell us about his, wait for it, his 25th noddle, novel, <laughs> noddle hidden in sight is Lord Geoffrey Archer who <laughs> joins us on the line from Cambridge in England. Good morning, he's, Lord he's Archer. Already shaking his head. My dear, it's amazing you still employ Simon. <laughs> it's beyond me. <laughs> Anna, can I talk to you? How kind of you to be on the show with the out of work actor. <laughs> now, can, I just say, can I just say, oh, uh, Anna, thank you for your kind comments because something you said uh, made me remember that it was Gay Byrne who, on his show 45 years ago, held up Cain and Abel and said, this will be a bestseller right across the world. It's among the best books I've ever read. And that changed my career because when I arrived in the United States, Gay Byrne was so popular in the States that I was getting onto every television program because of his backing. And I will remember that the rest of my life. And would you genuinely credit Gay Byrne, the late, great, uh, much loved broadcaster here in Ireland, oh, as giving you that first well, break, Geoffrey? He did indeed. Uh, and I sat on the sofa, <clears> staring <throat> at him in disbelief as he held up the book and said, uh, everybody in the world will be reading this book. It really, I was so moved and I owe him so much. And I, will not forget. Well, it's a lovely tribute because it's it's actually just past his one year anniversary. Yeah. So there we are. Um, can we talk about the new book, Jeffrey? One of the things that you said to us the last time that stuck in my mind, apart from the abuse that you gave me live on air, was uh, <laughs> was continues. the fact that you you have the same process for every novel that you handwrite every book and you do go through fourteen drafts before it gets to your publisher. Is, was it the same for this one? Well, this was strangely different. Simon, because uh, in coronavirus, during coronavirus, the 14 weeks I was locked up, mm. I was locked up for 144, locked in for 144 days, 920 hours, and so was able to write nonstop. And indeed, it's one of the privileges of being a writer that uh, being locked in doesn't make a great deal of difference. So I have immense sympathy for those people who, uh, I, I, I met a mother recently who has three children, one age eight, one age six, and one age four, and she was locked into a three-room flat with these three energetic animals with her night and day, and she was in a frazzled state. I also feel sorry for those people who have small businesses, particularly restaurants, and I have a friend who owns an art gallery, who, who just can't work. Yeah. So they're in terrible trouble. So the truth is, Simon, I was in a very privileged and very lucky position. Mm. I think you're always very aware of that, aren't you? The last time we spoke, Geoffrey, was this time last year, and we spoke about Nothing Ventured. This is the 25th novel, Hiding in Plain Sight. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, Nothing Ventured was uh, the beginning of William Warwick's life as uh, a young constable, yes. and then he becomes a detective... Uh, constable and in the art squad chasing a missing Rembrandt. In this book, uh, Hidden in Plain Sight, uh, he's been promoted to detective sergeant and he's been told to discover, find out, who is the drugs baron south of the river who's ruining so many lives. He discovers where he is, what they call the slaughter. He discovers where he is, but his problem is the slaughter is on the 20th, 21st and 22nd floor of a building and he's got to work out how to get 40 officers up there, arrest him and close the slaughter. So that's the second book. And as I told you last year, Anna, I aim to write seven separate books, all with a different subject. The first mm. was art fraud, the, the second drugs. The third is going to be police corruption the one I wrote during coronavirus, and he will become an inspector. And if I live long enough, because I'm 80 years old, if I live long enough, he will... Stop laughing, Simon. If I live long enough, he will get all the way to Commissioner of the Metropolitan 
police, Amazing. in which case we'll be out of coronavirus, which will give you a chance to sack Simon and Anna <laughs> to find a proper person to go with her. And we will go on, Anna, forever. Oh, I've no doubt you will. You'll certainly outlive me. Um, let's talk about yesterday, uh, if we can, Geoffrey, because it was such a historic day oh, with, with the results that came off from across the water. Uh, what was your reaction to, A, the campaigns that both ran and, and B, the result? Well, I had said on television four days before the election to Piers Morgan that Biden would get 300, over 300 electoral votes uh, and he would get over a, a, a majority of over 4 million. So I'm pleased that they happened because that's what I wanted to happen. I think America needs a calm period with a dignified and more gentle man to take them through the COVID problem and the other problems that have been created by Trump's presidency. So I wasn't sorry to see him go. I hope he has the dignity. I think it unlikely. I hope he has the dignity to concede today and acknowledge that he's been well and truly beaten. Because there are these uh, legal complaints are a joke. And there's only one state in which you can call for a recount, because as you will know, you can't call for a recount if it's less than 0.5%. So he's well and truly the winner. And the best and most honorable thing to do would be for Trump to acknowledge that and to allow uh, President-elect Biden to get on with his job of preparing to run that great nation. You spoke before, Jeffrey, about, uh, well, you worked with Margaret Thatcher for 11 years, about how yourself and your wife, Mary, often have conflicting views on the likes of Brexit. Were, were you aligned on the, the US presidential election this time round? Uh, totally. Yes. We were opposed, as you know, uh, on Brexit. I wanted to remain. Mary wanted to go. And there you see a picture of another great leader I had, had the privilege and honour of working for. Uh, there is my wife, who just got out of the river to help me with this. And indeed, you and Simon saw Mary in her river gear. We did indeed. Uh, she's refusing to appear on television in it. Pathetic. <laughs> but there you are. I told her nothing could be more pathetic than Simon. She would look wonderful. <laughs> He'd make oh, her look good, Lord. wouldn't he? In terms of Brexit, Jeff, uh, we might ask you, and in terms of uh, linking in with Joe Biden, you know, a lot of Irish commentary, a lot of Irish newspapers yes. this morning are saying, I is it good for Ireland? You know, we see the likes of Nigel Farage then tweeting last night saying that this man, Joe Biden, clearly hates the UK, which is, you know, That's again, not it, true. It, it's not true. What, what do you think true. it does for Brexit with Biden coming in there? It's irresponsible. I spoke to Senator Bill Bradley last night, and he said, it just isn't true, Jeffrey. And Bill Bradley was 20 years in the Senate with Joe Biden, so they're close friends. Mm. He said, it's just not true that he hates the British. That was a most irresponsible thing to say. And we must now build a relationship with the new president for the good of both countries. We have a long history with the United States. Though I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, Simon, to see that he's the 23rd out of 46 presidents, he's the 23rd with an Irish connection. Yes, which is absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of Joe Biden's cousins and relations popping up in various regional papers and radio stations this morning. <laughs> yes, I, well, you can't blame them. So well, I'm absolutely, not, I, yeah. I, and I'm sure his first, actually, diplomatically, it would be very wise if his first uh, visit was to Ireland, then he hasn't offended. Uh, the French, the Germans, all the British. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's probably what might happen. Jeffrey, your fans uh, can't wait to get into Hiding in Plain Sight, which is out now in all good bookshops. I know mm. the promotion of the, the latest book is going to be very different given the, the COVID time that we're yes. in. But we continue to yes. love your writing and follow you on social media. You're a joy on Instagram that's because I think you're shining a light on other authors as well, which mm. is a lovely gesture uh, for someone at that's your level fine. to do. And thank you for my now thank biannual you. dressing down, which is fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Jeffrey. Take care. Well, and Anna, I wonder, with Hidden in Plain Sight, if you would be kind enough to read it to Simon. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. Farewell, A pleasure thank as you. always. Right, after the break, more pops of colour <laughs> over, the, over on the catwalk. Fashion is next. I'm just going to collect my dignity over there. <laughs> Get me coat. <laughs>